Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to talk about how we could better contain SCP-173. So, we're going to try and split this into three parts. First of all, we're just going to examine the anomaly and the containment procedures surrounding it. Then we're going to uh, talk about ethics <laughs> and ethical related concerns. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how to improve on the con current containment procedures in such a way as to make them more effective and, po and potentially more ethical. So, first of all, <laughs> special containment procedures. Item SCP-173 is to be kept in a locked container at all times. When personnel must enter SCP-173's container, no fewer than three may enter at any time and the door is to be relocked behind them. At all times, two persons must maintain direct eye contact with SCP-173 until all personnel have vacated and relocked the container. First of all, the containment procedures alone don't always communicate enough information to understand how to contain the object. Thankfully, this SCP is incredibly short. We've talked, and most people are pretty familiar with it, so I'm not going to go over the exact things. It moves when it's not in a direct line of sight. It's made of concrete with re rebar reinforcement. There's Krylon brand spray paint on top of it. It will break your neck if it can get a hold of you. And it seems to generate a reddish brown substance on the floor that's supposed to be a combination of feces and blood. Uh, it says the origin is, of that is unknown, but that's the reason why it must be cleaned bi-weekly. Now, to be fair, the current version of SCP-173 uh, that most people are familiar with is, is based a lot in the SCP Containment Breach version, because in the SCP Containment Breach, which is incredibly popular, uh, it is the first SCP you encounter. But there's nothing that says, it, it's, you know, it says no fewer than three may enter at a particular time and the door must be locked behind them. It says the enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. In SCP Containment Breach, that means three guys go in, clean the thing. Those two things are not necessarily connected to each other. The enclosure can be cleaned without using people to do it. So we're going to talk, first of all, about the ethical considerations here. First of all... One has to assume, absent more information elsewise, that this is a sentient anomaly. We don't know for sure that that's true, because it does, because you can't observe it doing things, but it does do things. Well, you can technically. You can observe it after it's done a thing. So, we have to consider that it is a sentient anomaly. For, second of all, obviously, and this is always going to be true, but I'll always re-mention it because sometimes it's forgotten, if there's no proof that an SCP can regenerate and or come back from death, then killing it or destroying it is not an option for the SCP Foundation. And third, we need to limit its access to other people at all times as much as we can. If you look at the actual image for SCP-173, and I'm not going to put it on the screen because it's not creative commons and not allowed but if you look at the actual page itself you'll find that the image has windows <laughs> which not probably the best thing in the world and that is actually and you might be like how what does this have to do with the ethical considerations well those windows put other people at risk for no reason they do not need to be there scp-173 has shown no ability to jump it has shown no ability to do anything other than move across the ground. We don't need to put people at risk cleaning its enclosure. We don't need to put people at risk in any way, fashion, or form with this thing. We can put it in a sealed box for forever. And you might be like, well, it's going to uh, generate the, the blood and brown stuff on the ground. And that is true. However, it's not difficult to clean in such a situation. First of all, you could just have automatic spraying systems on the floor itself. That's a possibility. Secondly, even if you don't have an automatic spray system, you could conceivably send in people to do this thing by baiting SCP-173 into a compartment. So what you have is a containment chamber that is segmented. There's a wall between that, that SCP-173 cannot access through. And all you have to do, since it moves on its own, is bait it over to this side by closing your eyes and baiting it some, some way that you want. It moves around on its own regardless, but 
set up weight sensors. And when the weight sensor over here goes off, bring the door down and clean this side and then bring the door back up. And then when it goes back over here, weight sensor, bring the door back down. There are multiple ways to handle this. You can do that with automated systems. You could set up a completely automated system if you wanted to, or you could involve people, though I believe that involving people with an incredibly hostile SCP like this is probably the worst of all possible options. There's no reason to risk the lives of a D-Class on cleaning some stuff off of the floor when there are automated systems to do that. But if, for some reason, we're talking about a, uh, a world where such an automated system is impossible to implement, say, uh, 30, 40 years ago, where we had some technology where we could, you know, have locked door, like automated doors and everything, but not necessarily like a fully computerized system, maybe longer back, because this has been in containment for quite some time, some time. <laughs> it says it was moved to Site-19 in 1993, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't already in containment before that. So even if we go all the way back, we can fix the containment procedures by simply allowing for a baiting sort of situation. Now, its movement speed is unknown, and a lot of people treat that as to be an instantaneous movement speed, though I think if it were faster than naturally, what's the best way to put this? If it was faster than walking or running or sprinting even, then it feels like that was a kind of detail that would have been included in the document. So since it's not included in the document, one has to assume that it moves at a normal human pace. And all that means is that it's actually not that dangerous either. The idea that you blink and suddenly your neck is broken is not necessarily true. But that's a failing of the article. And we're not... Let's assume worst case scenario, since that's what we're playing with here. And that if you, if you close your eyes, it can move any distance as quickly as you'd like, right? So you can't possibly bait it from one place to another. Or maybe you could, because, you know, put up a window that's a plexiglass window that it can't break through. And bl blink your eyes, wait for it to be right in front of that window, and then close the door in between. If you can't get it to move in a way that's predictable or manipulatable, you can just move it on your own. Better yet, why not just have the floor slightly like this? If it's generating feces and blood on the floor, have the floor like this and just, you know, have washing that goes down into a, a at, at the bottom of the floor here. Like, just have a drain and have water come through periodically to clean the floor off. Simple. Easy. Not really that difficult to contain. The idea that you need to send people in is the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard. It's not ethical, it's not effective, and most of all, it's incredibly inefficient. Anyway, I think that covers him. I mean, he's not a, it's not a super complex system that we're dealing with here. So yeah, I feel like that covers most of the problems that you would have with containing SCP-173. Just set up some sort of system that doesn't require human beings to be in neck-breaking range. <laughs> that allows you to clean this uh, room, and that's it. And then keep it contained and, and completely uh, closed off. And there could be, and by the way, you're like, well, then there were, there's no potential for story there. Of course there is. Systems break down. Allow for that in your stories if you want to tell them. But you can create what are, assuming all your systems work properly, a completely fail-safe <laughs> uh, cleaning system for your SCP in a way. And it's just what I'm saying. It's like, don't be lazy. Do it the right way. And then once you've taken, see, once you've taken proper precautions, it's much worse when things go wrong. Because now you're like, oh, crap. I've taken every possible precaution and I'm still getting my neck broke. That sucks. You send some guy in to be an engineer or whatever, and suddenly, like, the, the, the system, like, he's in, he's behind a wall and he thinks he's safe. And then there's, but, you know, oh, no, there's a crack. And shoo, he comes in somehow. And that's your story. And you develop it from there. Anyway, I'm just saying, SCP-173, not too difficult to avoid getting killed by. It's probably, it probably could be, and except for the fact that it's Euclid, and Euclid's, uh, I'm sorry, sentient, and most sentient uh, entities are usually Euclid. Um, except for the fact that it's sentient, honest to God, you could probably just call it a safe 
SCP, keep it in a closed box and then move on. In fact, you don't even need to clean necessarily the enclosure. I mean, that's not necessary. Let the blood and feces build up. What happens after that? Who knows? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you disagree with my evaluation of SCP-173's containment procedures and how I would help or how I would improve them, let me know in the comments down below and then hit the subscribe button, please. <laughs> and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. It is incredibly disheartening that you're watching these videos without subscribing, Carl. This th That hurts me deeply. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100, and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Tuesday.